Good morning, dear friends. What a happy day it is. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you throughout this day as you begin this day's activities with this meditation on God's Word. Let us allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Today's meditation is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 to 6. The title is The Potter's House. The prophet Jeremiah was asked by the Lord God, who appointed him and called him to be a prophet, to visit a potter's house. And there he watched the potter at work, fashioning a pot from clay. But the potter had to break the pot he shaped and he fashioned because uh, in his size, after finishing, uh, the vessel was not suitable uh, for the purpose that he intended. So he had to remold the vessel into something else other than what he had first designed. Now, this is a parable from the potter's work. There are some important principles uh, for God's work in our lives. Certain lessons that we can learn. The first of these lessons is, uh, and the most important lesson is, our submission to God as the one who molds our character and um, our service to Him determine uh, the, to a large extent, what he can do with us. The extent of our submission and the motives are to be uh, given more importance. God can do anything. Submission or surrender to God has to be total and complete with God having complete control over your life. Because God knows what is best for you. And He knows what is best for me. God has an original plan for you and for me. He has a design for your future. He knows your present he knows your future as well, what it should be, what it ought to be, according to his plan and his purposes. And so the number two lesson is this. A lack of fervent commitment to God can frustrate the original purpose for you. Verse 10. And verse 10 tells us that a city or a nation does evil in the sight of God. And the, that city or nation does not obey God, then he will reconsider the good he had intended to do for it. And we, we know this from the history. God has an original plan. Apply it to your personal life. God knows His plans for you. And that is to prosper you and to bless you and to give you a wonderful, great future. That is God's plan. He wants you to be enriched in every way. And the third lesson is, God remains free to change his intentions for your life. If God has a planned goodness and blessings for us, and if we rebel against this God and against him, he may then shape us into parts destined for destruction. 
You read it in Jeremiah chapter 18, the same chapter, verses 7 and to 11. The example of the city and towns or nation I mentioned. See, God can have all beautiful things for you. And you have a beautiful future shaped by his own plans and purposes for you. But everything can be changed by being rebellious and disobedient to God. And remember, by your faithfulness to God and your unconditional commitment to Him who created you, you are allowing God to work out for you, all he has planned for you. When God created man, he created man perfect. With God's own image and likeness implanted inside of him. He gave them rules and regulations and commandments to obey by faith. But a man ruined everything for himself by disobeying God's laws and God's rules and rebelling against God's will for your life. How sad it is. Man became marred. And God created man with clay in his own image and in his own likeness. But the sin ruined what God has created. That image of God Almighty and likeness were ruined by man's rebellious action. Because of sin, today we suffer, number one, Physical ruin. You may ask how? That's how we have pain, sicknesses, and, uh, and, and, and ultimate death. And then uh, sin has ruined us, mental ruin. His imaginations are all evil in the sight of God. He began to plan and scheme a rebellion against God. His feelings and actions and reactions are all evil, covered with evil intentions. And then thirdly, the sin has caused spiritual ruin as well. How? Sin separated man from this holy God who has made man with a great good intentions for his eternity as well. And this is the greatest ruin of them all. The spiritual ruin, separated from God, lost eternal life with which God has created. It was God's intention that man live forever as long as he lived in that fellowship and communion with God, the Creator. And separated now from God. And this cause loss of our uh, privileges, our authority over other created things and beings. It was God's purpose that man subdue the earth and have authority over other creation and exercise rulership. He was to rule under God. This was God's original plan when he made man. My friends, by sin, everything was destroyed and spoiled for man. Today, man has no authority. He has no rulership. Everything is lost. I close here. And we will 
I continue this on Monday, I would like to tell you how man has lost authority and rulership. To whom and why. But today, I would like you to consider this very seriously. God has a plan, an original plan and purpose for your life. It is now your responsibility to discover God's plan and then make all the efforts for God's plan to become a reality into your life as you live in obedience to God's laws. Where do you read God's laws? In this book we call the Bible. The Bible tells you what God wants you to do and how you must live. Remember, you will be wise if you don't let God's plan and original purposes to be lost. But by your effort, you will discover God's will and live an obedient, submissive life. Submissive to God's will and God's ways that you may enjoy the richness of His mercy and loving kindness that makes you rich. A man who is rich in faith and rich in the love of God and the knowledge of God will ever be a success wherever he goes. This is God's plan for you. And I'm telling you, you will never regret it. Otherwise, like the potter has to destroy the one he made when he realized that that is not suitable to meet the purpose that he intended. And that is what happened to humanity, my friends. It was not God's plan for man to live the way he is living today. And I pray that you will realize the truth of it and change and be submissive to God. Find out God's will by reading God's word. The word of God tells you God's will. You don't have to ask, what is God's will for me? Please pray and tell me. No, it is all revealed in God's word. You have to get into God's word and live richly. And I pray that the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit will guide you and enable you to be reconciled to God and live in peace with God. Thank you in Jesus' name. God bless you, my friend. This is a great day to live for his glory. This is the day given to you. Have a great day and enjoy this day. Amen.